Welcome back, you guys. This is the Proclivity Podcast. If you're joining us live on Facebook, you're in the Proclivity Method private Facebook page. If you're not part of that group, you're totally missing out. You're not part of the cool kids. Maybe you don't have Facebook, and that's okay, too. Yet, if you do have Facebook and you want to join, head over the Proclivity Method on Facebook Go ahead and ask to be part of the group. If uh, Emily decides that you're cool enough, then you're in because I don't control any of that. It's Emily purely saying whether you're cool enough or not. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Emily is the nicest person on the entire planet. Welcome to the, sh- to the show, you guys. We're Proclivity, and we do... One thing, and one thing very well, we create healthier bodies and happier lives, and we do that by harnessing the benefits of metabolic flexibility. We want our bodies to be metabolically flexible, a.k.a. superhuman. That's what I say. That's not what Emily says. <laughs> Don't put words in her mouth. That's only that's something that I do. Um, listen, the, the metabolic flexibility is vital in being able to live in the body that you want something that we miss quite often. And you know what we also do? We also help you to create a happier life. And we do that by harnessing the power of the words. Your words matter, guys. Okay? It matters. And one of the things I was thinking about this morning, Coach Emily, mm-hmm. it goes through my head so often. You can never take back what you say. And Emily knows. I... I very rarely use never always because that's a binary word, right? Binary, like a light switch on off, like coding in a computer, ones and zeros. We know that the sun always sets. Okay, binary. Yet that person is always late. Mm, always, like the sun sets every single day. They've never been on time. And that's why I say, You can never take back what you say because it's true. When it's said, it is said. Now, people can forgive you and you can ask for forgiveness and you can say, ah, that's not what I meant to say. Yet, when you say it, it's said. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself quite often, if people just slowed down, took a moment, watch this, guys. Well, you can't watch it, but listen. (laughs) Take a breath. It gives your mind a moment to go, what is it that I'm going to say? What does it matter? Then you have the ability to be able to say what you mean and mean what you say. Sounds like some powerful powerful stuff, right? Oh, I love it. Yes. And this is how we help you guys. Because it's not just about, I mean... Listen, we have the best nutrition advice on the planet. I was telling Emily that before. Why? Because Emily is the smartest woman I know. Pretty much hands down. Yeah, (laughs) hands down. Hands down. If you didn't see our testimonials, go to to our testimonials. The proof is in the pudding. Just go (laughs) go see it. Oh, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. (laughs) If this is your first time, guys, joining the <laughs> Proclivity Pro, Pro Podcast, this is how we do it. Emily and I, great. We're, we're pretty much best friends. And by pretty much, I mean we're best friends <laughs> due to the fact that we own a business. And so, therefore, we're locked together for a lifetime. <laughs> and we just have a fun time here. And we hope that you have a fun time as well on the show. Yep. Welcome. Um, and we're going to talk about carbs today, Right. Right. We love talking about food. Maybe too much. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know either. I I mean, (laughs) listen, y'all, if you, if you don't know much about Emily when it comes to fitness, this chick, my gosh, this woman, let me, excuse me. She's not a chick. She's a woman, (laughs) grown ass woman who's given birth to a child. She runs so fast. I'm a fast runner. She, I did a workout with her where it was a bunch of running. I, I just couldn't believe it. 
no, you know what? <laughs> I can't believe it because she's fast. <laughs> and the reason I bring that, the reason I bring that up, is though, is that we also love fitness, yet we really like food, because mm -hmm. it, it is the power source for your body, and when you get those things lined up, whew, magic, magic, abracadabra. So we're going to talk about carbs today, guys. Y you know what? Carbs get a bad rap. They get a bad rap. And there's, there's, there's a, to me, there's a two-part series to this. Okay. There was some faulty scientific, you know, evidence back in the early 90s when they created the pyramid. It was, it was faulty. And that's okay. Right? Yet it did this domino effect of, you know, carbs and what carbs are. And then there was like, of course, you know, eat carbs and low fat. And then there was like this opposite, like they ran the other way. And everybody's like, <laughs> carbs are the worst thing for you. No, you need to get 20 grams of carbs every day to be healthy. So we're going to talk about them today. Are carbs, are all carbs bad for you? And that's what we're going to dive into. And you're going to have a, a good understanding of um, what carbs are, processed carbs, whole food carbs, complex carbs, simple carbs. And by the end, you're going to have a, a, a good knowledge about it, I believe. Do you believe that? Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Let's dive into it then. Straight out the gate, Coach Emily. Mm -hmm. What are carbs? If people are sitting out there, I mean, there are some people that don't understand mac macronutrients mm -hmm. um, that well. Uh, what, what, what are carbs and what type of carbs are out there? Let's give a general understanding of yeah. what carbs are. Yeah, carbs are one of the three macronutrients that we need to survive. Um, need is controversial these days. Uh, mm. <clears throat> but most people will say you need them to survive long term, um, to be healthy, be optimal. They are what gives our body the quick burning energy. So I use the analogy that carbs are like kindling wood versus fats are like slow, hard burning wood. Mm. So when we want that quick acting energy. We want carbs to help mm. source that fuel. So they turn carbs, whenever we eat them, no matter what kind, turn into glucose. And our body uses glucose for energy. So simply put, that's what carbohydrates are. And yeah, we're going to get, uh, we're going to dive into why you might need them, um, the amounts you might need them, so on and so forth. For sure. And we know, I mean, we, we've talked about fasting and, and we went through this whole fasting stuff well. And glucose is vitally important for the brain. Mm -hmm. and and the body like we need glucose and the and the body will figure out how to make glucose and so it's really being able to go hey how do we how do we manage this glucose how much glucose should we have and how is it beneficial for us in certain areas of our life right like, again like there's this like don't eat carbs yet then there's this other side where it's like you go into the endurance world or the high performance world and it's like no you have to eat carbs and so it's like well oh what is that i really need and if i'm not at this elite athlete how much carbs do i need and what kind of carbs should i be having so let's let's dive into the question what what are the best kind of carbs to have what kind of carbs should we be having Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll, you'll hear me say this a lot. There's no, there's never a one size fits all, especially when it comes to carb intake. And so we'll dive into that deeper. But the types of carbs that we want to be eating are mainly whole food carbs. <laughs> You're, it's like a broken record here, right? Mm -hmm. But whole food carbs, it's going to be much easier to maintain balance, better blood sugar, hormone balance, energy levels. If we stick to whole food carbs, meaning nothing that's processed or packaged, uh, when you go to the grocery store, it's usually in the produce section. Um, and then sometimes for certain people, we can do whole grains and beans if our digestive system is working well. But mainly fruits and vegetables is what we like to recommend. And and so then, then we get in this, uh, this state of, all right, uh, we understand, right? Whole food carbs are the best. Staying away from the processed carbs, 
um, you know, these really simple carbs that are, are, are processed, stripped of nu- nutrients. Then we start getting into the realm of vegetables, mm-hmm. carbs, fruits, carbs. Well, what's the balance there when it comes mm-hmm. to fruit carbs and vegetable carbs? Yeah, so fruit, they're both going to have fiber in some level of starch likely, which is all good stuff for most of us. Fruit tends to be higher in sugars, uh, which is totally fine. Again, depending on your activity level, your digestive system, um, and you know the season of life that you're in, that could be a great thing. But typically for most people, most clients who come to us, they're looking to optimize their health, maybe have a different body composition, aka lose weight. Uh, maintain lean body mass, those kind of things. We typically recommend to start off with more veggies than fruit, just because of that high sugar content in fruit. And in specifically diving deeper into that, I like to recommend berries versus say a banana or maybe um, like a peach. Those are, again, we're gonna have a better insulin uh, reaction to those, to the berries, for example, than we are to the higher sugar fruits most often. Mm. And, and, and this is an important part to be able to bring up, you know, cause what we tend to see quite often when we start saying to people like, Hey, we, we want you to go eat whole foods that their palate is still towards, you know, um, even higher sugar type of fruits, um, and vegetables, really their palate isn't ready for that too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people can also say like, yeah, I'm going to get carbs. I'm going to get the good carbs. I'm going to get fruit. And yet we can eat too much fruit Mm -hmm. and it can not be so good for us. Correct. Correct. Yep. So, so again, going back to digestion, if you're having any kind of digestive issues like chronic bloating, um, you've been told you maybe have SIBO, which is, uh, a bacterial overgrowth, um, you have maybe yeast or candida, any types of those things that can be extremely harmful because that's what those things feed off of mm. the higher sugar. So we want to pay attention to the amount of fruit versus vegetables that we're having in a day for most of us. Um, so I recommend somewhere, it's like, again, starting point somewhere around a cup of fruit a day. If you tend to do well with it, if your activity level is higher then I would I'd recommend maybe you could have a little bit more. But again, that individual level experimentation, working with a coach really comes into play. And in, term, in terms of vegetables, there are also different kinds of vegetables that may play into a little bit higher carb amount. So there's the uh, complex versus simple. So we know simple are those straight up sugars, like raw sugar, cane sugar, um, so things that are in like sodas, um, white flour. Those are the simple carbs. Those tend to be used super quickly or stored really easily. Mm. Um, and then there's the complex carbs, which tend to be more whole food based, like the vegetables such as potatoes, um, vegetables, of course, beans, peas, carrots, those kinds of things. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so with the with these the, the the balance of fruit. Now you you said one one cup of fruit. Give me an example of like. Would a, a full banana be one cup of fruit? Yeah, I would say that's about about accurate if you're if it's a typical sized banana. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all, if you're listening, this is one of the things that 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 we tend to run into is people will throw in like spinach or arugula into their breakfast. I'm like, yeah, I got my veggies. And then they'll have a banana and then berries in their oatmeal right and so on and so forth and we're not saying that that's bad again we're not we're not telling you like oh that's terrible yet we are looking right now at carbs and so if we're having a banana and we're also having berries and it's an oatmeal and we have two eggs with arugula in it we are on the higher side of carbohydrates there Mm -hmm. and there's Mm -hmm. this is where the confusion can come into it's like we look at that and we're like well well that's a healthy meal right yet again when we talk about what happened with uh, this sway from the early 90s of carbs. I mean, it literally says on the pyramid, right? It said cereal, bread, (laughs) right? The stuff that we're like now going like, no, you don't have cereal for breakfast. Yet there was this lingering effect that has has attached to that. And yet Mm -hmm. people aren't having breakfast anymore. What are they having? Oatmeal. 
I'm mm-hmm. having oatmeal every morning. I got my oatmeal and so on and so forth. Um, and so being able to recognize that usually most people, and I'm, I'm asking this, most people that we see usually tend to have more fruit intake and less vegetable intake and then sprinkle in a little bit of processed or a high mm-hmm. amount of process. Mm-hmm. What is really what we should be looking at when it comes to the balance of, you know, vegetables, fruit, and yeah. some processed food? So obviously our goal is to minimize processed food as much as possible, but is that realistic for our day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month lives? No, for most of us, right? There's some people who don't enjoy the highly processed stuff, and that comes with lifelong habits of not eating it and understanding how it affects their body, um, and it might be easier for them. But yes, I would say minimize the processed stuff to 10% or less of your day if you can. If, you know, if you're on the higher end of processed foods right now, start with 30 or 20% start where you can. Um, But as far as fruit and vegetable ratio go, to keep things simple, let's say you have a um, half fruit and two times, or sorry, so say one portion of fruit, two times vegetables at a minimum. We want to increase the amount of vegetables as much as possible because one, they're they're satiating. Two, they have tons of micronutrients. Three, they have lots of fiber. So all these things tend to be good for most people. Now I will say for people who are working out in the morning, for example, those oats might be necessary for before or after your workout. There's always these exceptions there. If you're on your feet all day, if you're moving heavy heavy stuff all day, you have kids, there might be times for these things if you're breastfeeding. So again, that's why we look at the individual. That's why there's such thing as coaches like ourselves to dive in deeper to the individual. So there's always a time and place for these things aside from the process stuff. I recommend saving those for the special occasions or treating yourself if you truly love something every once in a while. I just would not recommend it on the daily. So we're really looking at that two to one ratio of vegetables to fruit. Yeah, it's a great starting ideally. point. Ideally, right? Yeah, ideally we even increase that amount of veggies. So this brings me to the question. I love asking this question. Is it possible to eat too many vegetables? It honestly is for some mm. people. For some people, it, it's a lot of fiber, like I mentioned. It can mm-hmm. really mess up your stomach. And that goes for fruit, too, because of the fiber content. Um, it can, you know, if you notice yourself eating a lot more, uh, even fruit juice, which I don't recommend. But if you have that, if you have a ton of veggies. Brussels sprouts for a lot of people, they're not cooked all the way, can really mess up their stomach, meaning you have lots of bloating, you have trouble going to the bathroom, or you go to the bathroom too much. Um, so, yes, in that case, yes. But typically, you know, adding on the veggies – will generally for most people be a good thing. Good thing. Good thing. It's, you know, one of the things that we we talk about is like, go ahead, have the veggies. If you get mm-hmm. to a point where it's like, oh, you're having now some lingering effects to it, that's where we start making the adjustments. Right. Yet most people don't get to that point of like, yep. hey, I'm eating too many veggies. I'm now <laughs> having this like adverse effect, which is really an easy fix compared mm-hmm. to too many processed right. foods and what that does to our energy levels, what it does to our, our microbiome and everything else, right? Correct. Exactly. Yeah. We, we definitely want to think in our head, veggies are unlimited when we first starting on a you know, health journey. If you're trying to improve something in your nutrition, eat as many veggies as you want. It's really hard to overeat them. Similar to protein, they're satiating if they're a whole food source. So definitely go for it. And one of the things I want to break into, because we talk about this as well, is what, I, I love that you break this down. What are the three different veggie sources that people can, you know, put in their reticular activating system and go, oh, I can, it, it, it segments it to be able to go, oh, this, this, and this. What are those three right. different um, carbs uh, when it comes to vegetables, how we break them down? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is some, a tool that I use for myself and for my clients when we're going to the grocery store to think in your head, okay, what three types of veggies am I going to get this week? So my categories are fibrous, which again, like most veggies are going to have fiber in them, but there's some that are much higher, such as broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, carrots, those kinds of things that are like the harder, the more vol, uh, you can, you can eat a lot and get really full because they're high in volume, um, and fiber. So there's the fibrous, then I go to leafy greens, which again are fibrous too, but they're not as filling because of course they're smaller. So you can eat a lot more of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so leafy greens, 
and then a starchy one, which can be stuff like potatoes or um, beans, stuff like that, or that are more starchy and maybe a little bit less filling, um, especially if you're more active in your lifestyle. If you're doing more resistance training, hit workouts, those would be something you want to capitalize on for sure. So I look at those three categories. I pick one from each category when I'm doing my food prep or grocery shopping from the week. Um, and that's how I structure my food prep. And, and that, when you talk to me about that, uh, to be able to have that has really helped me. Because I, I now, I segment it, you know, in this in some the similar facet, I, I look at vegetables and go, would I be able to eat this raw? Like an asparagus spear. I mean, could I? Eh, I could, <laughs> you know. Um, or I'm looking at something like a cucumber higher water content, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, I could, I could chomp on a, on a cucumber and mm -hmm. being able to look at those a little bit differently. Like that would need to be cooked right. leafy greens. I can eat right away. Either right? or you can cook. Yeah. Or I can cook it right. Where really like broccoli. Yes, you can have it raw yet. One things I find out when I don't cook my broccoli, it's so much fiber. Yep. It's not been softened up. It hasn't been. So then I'm gassy. Exactly. Right? I'm bloated. It's not a good feeling. And if yeah. people tend to be like, oh, I'm just going to go eat the broccoli or the cauliflower just raw as it is. And then they start getting those effects. Well, we're starting to make this connection in our head like, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? Vegetables really don't do well with me. Well, exactly. Wait a second. No, you're, <laughs> you're just not recognizing, right? That, hey, yes. cook those once, right? Chop them up more. Yep. Exactly. Chop All them up things. more, right? Maybe start off with like a cherry tomato. And cucumber, yes. right? That's going to be strategies. Some strategies to it, guys. So that's what we're talking. We're talking about carbs here. We're talking about we're talking about the difference in, in whole foods and processed foods, and and so let's let's dive into processed, right? Yeah. Again, we we look back at that pyramid. That was all processed foods at the bottom of the pyramid, right? I mean, it's literally showing like bread and like. <laughs> You know, that is why the the picture we have on our Instagram is a loaf of bread, you know, uh, because that's what, that's what we knew. Now, is a loaf of bread or is bread bad for you? Are those processed foods bad for you? Yeah, so I like to look at foods in terms of how nourishing are they or what are they going to do for ourselves? So sometimes we, we want that treat of a processed carb, whether it be cake, whether it be a cookie, you want, we want to have those treats. That's our culture, that's reality, and there is a time and place for those. But mm -hmm. in general, if we're trying to optimize our health, we want to minimize those as much as possible. And again, I don't like to have those restrictive restraints of being like, oh no, never have that or totally avoid that. Yeah. There are There's a place and time for people with certain health issues where they should, but for the most part, the majority of us should just minimize those. And what can help is to add all the processed foods back in. So start slow by adding in those foods as much as you can mm -hmm. and staying away from those processed packaged foods as much as you can. It's an adjustment, it takes time but it is worth it. So to answer add your in, question. Add in the whole foods. Yes. Okay. Yes. You said processed food. Okay. Sorry. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> you guys, personal. we're not saying that. <laughs> we're not saying that. Yes. So, so the majority of processed foods are not going to do a whole lot for us. They may yeah. fill our, our cup on a random Sunday or a random birthday party day or a special occasion. They may um, bring us some joy, but overall, they're not going to help our body perform um, or be healthy long-term if we're eating them every day or weekly, you yeah. know, th those reps count. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And and there's a difference, guys. You know, one of the things that we talk about in the in the proclivity method is the difference between a cheat day and a treat meal, right? Think about the difference. Cheat day. You've given yourself an entire day to cheat on who, <laughs> right? When we talk about cheating, we cheat on a test. We Somebody cheated on their spouse. What kind of what kind of feelings, what kind of positive or negative feelings come up with that? Not good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about treating ourselves. You treat yourself to a movie on a rainy day. Ah, oh, that sounds nice. You treat yourself to a massage. Why? Because you deserve it. Okay. Then I can treat myself to this meal or to this processed food. 
and what we can do is enjoy the experience and then move on. When we say cheat, now all of a sudden we're thinking about it for the next three days. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't believe I cheated. That cheat meal was way too much. I can't believe I ate that. I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, I can believe you ate it because you did, right? And it was quicker we can go, cool, and it was good, and I enjoyed mm -hmm. it, and right back on. We move yep, on. Take the guilt, take the guilt out of it. 100%, 100%. So now we've covered... We covered the whole foods. We talked about proportions when it comes to our vegetables and our fruits. We talked about the different vegetables that we should be having, right? Again, guys, one cup of fruit a day, ideally, okay? I always like saying this, and Emily's heard it, me say this many times. Only one out of 10 of Americans, this is from the CDC, only one out of 10 of Americans are getting the appropriate amount of fruits and vegetables a day. And we wonder why we're not metabolically flexible. Oh, what a perfect lead-in. Let's talk about metabolic flexibility. This is one thing that we focus on when it comes to the proclivity method is creating metabolically flexible bodies because we know that bodies have become very inflexible when it comes to metabolic flexibility. Metabolic flexibility, guys, mm -hmm. your, bo your body's ability to burn carbohydrates or fats. If we're constantly relying on carbohydrates, we're going to constantly search for carbohydrates. If we're not making sure that we get two to one ratios of fruits and vegetables or even just getting fruits and vegetables, again, CDC, one out of 10, then we're gonna be very inflexible because we're gonna be constantly searching for the processed carbs to be able to have a fuel source because the body's going like, oh, well, if you're gonna give me that, that's what I'm gonna take. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. really shut down this other source of, of being able to burn fat. And so mm -hmm. then we don't have that fat burning body. So how do... How do carbohydrates play into this metabolic flexibility? What's the what's the the, the, the science behind it? Um, how can we uh, paint this to um, our listeners? Yeah. So typically, what I see in most clients who come to me, most people who are not metabolically flexible, so inflexible when it comes to your metabolism, the most common thing I see when you look at your food journals or how you're eating throughout the day is that you're snacking throughout the day or you're constantly eating whether that be every half hour every two hours even we have mm. a we have our breakfast and then we're yeah. hungry for a morning snack an hour two hours later then we have our lunch then we have that afternoon snack or even the coffee or the the treat because we're like our insulin levels have gone so low our blood sugar excuse me and we're looking for something to help boost our energy mm -hmm. and our mood yeah and then we have dinner um so that's what, at least five times a day, I would say people maybe even have a dessert after or you eat even more, have that handful of nuts or something else throughout the day as they walk by, um, you know, your table or the snack room or break room. So when we are constantly eating, like you said, we are signaling to our body, oh, we use carbohydrates for fuel. And it turns off that system of being like, oh, we need fat for fuel. We need to turn to fat for fuel because first our body likes to go to the glucose, to the carbohydrates. So it'll always go to that first. So if you're constantly eating, your body will forget how to use fat for fuel, mm. which is not a good, not a good thing. Not a good so thing. then when say you go four or five, six hours without eating, yeah, you're not going to be happy. You're going to have what's called hangryness, mm. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, you're going to feel very uh, lethargic. You might have a headache. These are all low blood sugar things. And it doesn't mean we need to eat automatically. That's not the long-term cure. That's a short-term cure. But when we want to fix our metabolic flexibility, we want to start using more fats and proteins, vegetables as more carbs, and slowly teach our body how to go longer between meals, use fat for that fuel source. So my recommendation is to stick to, at least start with sticking to three meals a day. So meaning we're going longer between meals, we're not snacking. And what makes that easier are a number of things we've talked about before, hydration, adding in more vegetables like we're talking about today, it helps fill you up and then fats and proteins of course help with satiety and more energy as well yeah and we and we talked about that um last week and in, in talking about protein and the importance of protein how it can help you lean out by being satiated um and th this also with the protein and mixing in good carbohydrates helps you to e extend that time mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. eating so so then we're into four to six hours in between meals and that then body uses up the that glucose store and then can start moving to the energy source of fat is that right 
Exactly. Yeah. So for the science shows for most people, we use up our, you know, say we have a meal, it has some carbs in there. We use up those glucose storage or those glucose uh, that we do eat the carbohydrates within three hours, typically on average. And then we start to move to our fat stores um, or even some storage of glucose. So it might take even longer for some people. And so that is why we extend that time. So our blood sugar can level out. We, our body can start using that fat for fuel, not only for energy, but then that's also what helps to burn fat lose weight right um and you know a side perk to that is we want our digestion to be healthy right and giving that time between meals is going to optimize our digestion it's going to give it time to clean up to get itself back together to get uh, food moved on from one system to the next so Mm -hmm. like your stomach Mm -hmm. to your small intestine to your large intestine Mm -hmm. so on and so forth and that really helps with um, absorbability and long-term health and feeling good, right? We all want to feel good. We don't want to be bloated all the time. Totally. So what what we're talking about here is that one of the things I, I really want to touch on is, guys, if you're metabolically inflexible, guess what time after you eat that you'll start getting hungry? Oh, that's weird. That two and a half, three hour mark. Where people are like, or oh, sooner. T- yeah, or sooner. Oh, it's time for a snack, right? I, I should eat. When you know you're starting to become metabolically flexible is when you're able to go, oh, six hours later, eight <laughs> hours later, right? For some people, it's 24 hours later, and your energy levels stay fine, and your digestion levels are fine, and your mm-hmm. clarity is fine, and your uh, right? Don't, so on and so forth. So, yep. And, and we know that everyone wants to have a better body composition. Most people, most people yet to have great energy levels and to feel good. I'm telling you, you guys, when you become metabolically flexible, that's why I say you become superhuman. And I, and I tease, I tease this all the time with Emily is that, oh, when I become metabolically flexible and I become superhuman, you know what I, I can do? I don't have to eat. Oh, you? You have to eat? Ha, 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 ha. See me? I don't have to eat. And I be, feel like I'm superhuman because my energy level st- level stay the same because my body knows how to switch over to that fat burning. When you don't have that ability to switch over to that fat burning, you feel like garbage because mm-hmm. it's like, no, we need more carbs and we don't know how to do that. You, head, you start getting a headache, right? And you start feeling weak and fatigued and lethargic while well, I'm just out there running 50 Ks. <laughs> Super it's true. Superhuman stuff. So we're going to start wrapping this up a little bit. Let we, We've talked about the importance of metabolic flexibility and, and the carbs and two to one ratios. How many carbs should people be having in the day? Yep. Again, huge, huge variable here, depending on who you are, meaning what do you do for your job? Do you stand? Do you sit all day? Do you, how often do you work out? What type of workouts do you do? How many steps do you get in a day? What season of life are you in? Did you just have a baby? Um, All these different things. And it's going to change. It could change day to day. It could change every year, you know, all these variables. But in general, if I were to give someone some basic advice, a starting point, I would recommend start around 100 grams of carbohydrates. If your activity is much lower, I would bump that down a little bit. If your activity is much higher, bump that up a little bit. Say plus or minus 30 grams, just to start mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. See how you feel and go from there. Yep. And, and, the, and the main focus really is is, is to be able to, to have those grams in fruits, vegetables, whole foods. Because you can get to 100 grams like that. When you're oh, talking yeah. processed foods and yeah people are like oh it's so easy to eat that amount of carbs well yeah not not so much when you're starting to include more whole foods which is the goal we don't want to overeat them right so including more fruits veggies especially veggies it's going to make that more challenging in a good way so we aren't naturally overeating yes, yes. so so i would sh- again shoot for 80 to 90 percent of those carbs to be whole food sources and one of the one of the pictures that i took a long time ago that i love showing it's a plate and it's one of those like Hershey nuggets, you know, like the little square nugget ones mm-hmm. individually wrapped. Your favorite? Yes, my favorite. Y'all, <laughs> if you ever want to give me a gift, it's it's Hershey's. So um, <laughs> I know people are, think it's so weird, but I have an emotional connection to Hershey's. 
right? I like I've it. told you about it so many times. <laughs> if you guys don't know about um, Hershey's and what they do for kids, go to their website and do a little research and you'll see, you'll be like, you know what? I love Hershey's now as well too. <laughs> um, plus it's just a classic bar. Anyways, get past it. <laughs> I have that little nugget on a plate and then I have 15 of the small carrots, right? I think it's 15 or 17. That's the same amount of sugar content, right? One little guy like that where you could pop easily. I mean, you're talking me. I could I could pop 10 of those. But when we're talking 17 carrots to get the same sugar amount, when we start looking at if we're trying to get 100 grams of carbohydrates and vegetables alone, dang, that becomes actually quite challenging. For sure. It fills you up. I always tell people veggie volume. If you're still feeling hungry after and you've got your protein, you've got your fats, add up, load up on the veggie volume, especially those fibrous veggies. And, and speaking back to your example, uh, a good visual cue to go along with that when you're looking at labels is the amount of sugars or added sugars or even carbohydrates in, uh, sorry, sorry, just the added sugars on a label. Mm -hmm. About four grams is about one teaspoon of sugar. So visually you're like, man, a teaspoon is actually a, a good amount. I mean, you're looking yeah. at straight sugar, right? Yeah. Only four grams. So when you have a soda, that's like 35 plus grams. That's, that's a lot. That's and a so lot. that can help your brain be like, oh my goodness, like visualize it and be like, wow, what is this going to do for my body? Just scooping sugar, like tablespoons of sugar I, into your mouth. Yep. Yeah. Not only is it going to give that blood sugar spike and then drop that energy crash, but you're going to be more addicted to it because that's what our brain is uh, wired to do yep. for survival. We want yep. more and more and more. So it's not about willpower all the time. It's more about um, understanding what our brain's wired to do and controlling that environment around us. Last question before yes. we go into our, our, our three suggestions or our three tips. Is there a certain time that we should be having carbohydrates? Yeah, that's a good, really good question. <laughs> um, typically, I recommend having a lower carb breakfast. At least try it out. Because when we wake up in the morning, our cortisol levels are already at its highest point, which is normal and a good thing. But once we start adding on things like coffee, like sugars, like all those refined carbs, or even carbohydrates in general for some people, it can stress us our body out a little bit more, increasing those cortisol levels. When we do that chronically, that causes a hormone imbalance, and that can lead to weight gain, more inflammation, sleep issues, energy issues, all the things that we do not want. So I always recommend trying to have a lower or no carb breakfast, just see how it feels. So focus on protein and fats, vegetables are okay. Of course, they're gonna have a little bit of carbohydrates in there, but they are gonna be more complex, meaning they're going to not spike our blood sugar as, more, as much. So I recommend focusing on adding your carbs in around your workouts or the more movement around your day. And then for some people uh, can intake more carbohydrates at night and that can actually help with sleep. But again, focusing on those complex or vegetable source of carbohydrates more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And when I say, I should clarify, when I, when I say around your workouts, uh, that could be before or after. Yeah. Typically for people who are trying to maintain or even build muscle, you want it um, before and after maybe, especially if you're trying to build, if you're trying to maintain, maybe just after. If you're trying to lose weight, I recommend having it just after because yeah. that gives your body a chance to burn through that glucose during the workout. Yeah, 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 totally. And which it, which brings us all the way back to the point when we were talking about the, 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 the food pyramid and when we were talking about, you know, breads and cereals and oatmeal. Guys, think about your breakfast mm -hmm. and what Emily just said, that we want our lowest carb meal, ideally, depends on each individual in the morning yet what do we usually see i had my avocado toast i had my oatmeal banana berries i had um you know a uh, uh, muffin some fruit right these are all higher carb meals and so we're having our highest carb meal first thing in the morning we're not getting enough protein there's barely any fat in it dependent and we wonder why we're hungry there we wonder mm -hmm. why our emotions are all over the place our energy levels are dipping and coming up up and down you guys this is not rocket science we are not 
sitting here trying to make it confusing for you, actually we dumb it down as much as we possibly can because while everyone else is trying to get you to you know, count grams and macros and challenge this and challenge that, we're sitting here going like, hey, let's first start talking better to ourselves when it comes in our, to our relation with food. And then let's just take the pressure off. Let's take the drama out of it. Let's de-escalate the drama. Let's look at food for what it is. Let's find the things that you like to eat. And, and let's get the, the right foods at the right time. Oh, wow, that takes a lot of pressure off. So instead of this constant pressure that we feel on top of us that we have to do it a certain way, we just go, hey, here are the guidelines. Follow those. Really easy. No big deal. Oh, I can, it does, it's not a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. Oh. <laughs> and what we see with our clients is they lose weight because they're not stressing on food. And when we're not thinking about food, guys, if I told you, don't think about the red ball in your right hand, don't think about the ball, the a red ball in your right hand, what are you going to think about? The red ball in your right hand. So if you're thinking about macros every single moment of the day, what do you think? You're going to be thinking about food all day long, which is going to spike your sympathetic response, which is going to spike your cortisol levels, which is going to make you moody, which is going to make you want to have that sugar at the end of the night. Oh, shoot. And here we are back to the same cycle. <laughs> So let's wrap this up. What are, what are three things that people can do to start balancing out their carbohydrate intake so that yes. they have a more metabolically flexible body and they have better energy throughout the day and all the other things that we talked about? Yeah. Well, number one, focus on quality rather than quantity. Like you just mentioned, stop, stop, you know, stop uh putting that pressure on yourself of counting or like oh this is too much focus on the quality first much easier you know less guilt and pressure on that end so add in whole foods even if it's just some carrots at breakfast handful of bell pepper uh sliced bell peppers stuff like that so whole food source is number one number two change your environment and when i say that i mean stop going to starbucks in the morning to where you're enticed to get the the scone or the pastry or the sweetened drink. Mm. Stop walking by the break room at work that you know has donuts in it. Just mm. avoid it. Mm -hmm. Or put it away. Like uh, if you're at your house and you have treats, that's okay, of course. Put it in a cabinet, you know, high up so it's not at eye level. You're not seeing it more throughout the day. Number three, like I said before, experiment with a low carb or no carb breakfast. See how it feels. And when I say this, that doesn't mean eat a small breakfast. That mm -hmm. means focus on protein, vegetables, and fats. All right. So example, eggs, sausage, um, some broccoli. Uh, eggs, or you can, you can do whatever you want, but eggs are obviously the go-to breakfast protein uh, item. It's my favorite. If you don't like eggs, I get a lot of people, I meet a lot of people who are like, oh, I just don't crave eggs in the morning. First of all, <laughs> eventually you might. You know, your palate will change over time as you add more whole foods. Mm -hmm. But I get that. You know, once, twice a week, you're like, I just need to break up the cycle of eggs. Try bacon, sausage, leftover meat from the night before. You can, um, you know, find things are palatable to yourself. So adding in spices and fats and stuff like that can help. And again, that's why a coach is very helpful. I can give you more ideas. But I highly encourage you to at least try it two days this week. Try two days of lower carb breakfast. Let me know how you feel, how your um, energy levels are, how your satiety levels are. Yeah, there, there you guys. And just to throw this out here, guys, again, your your mind is a very powerful thing. You can have dinner, dinner, I'm doing quotations, for breakfast. You can have salmon for breakfast. We have just been told. That's what you have. You have eggs and bacon, and that's just what breakfast is wait a second, well, what if you had a steak in in the morning? What, what if you had a salad in the morning? Try it out, guys. There's, there's no restrictions here when it comes to, to food. So you get to try yep. it out and you get to go, oh, I like that, or how did it make me feel? So well, just one little thing I wanted to throw in there with that. All right, that's, you guys, that's it. I talked a lot about, we talked a lot about carbs today. 
being able to understand the differences in the carbs, simple and complex, and fruits and vegetables, really when you should be having, how much you should be having, yet it is all going to be dependent on your lifestyle and whether you can actually put it into play. We could give you all the information, but if you are unable to believe that you can do it or create space to do it, then it's just not going to work. And we have a program that helps you to be able to create that space, to create the correct attitude, to apply all the different techniques that we give you. It's called the Proclivity Method. It's 12 weeks long. It's an incredible program, group program, where we run with eight to 10 individuals every single month for three months. We meet once a week, Coach Emily and myself we work language, lifestyle, and nutrition. This is the all-in-one package. I am a high-level life coach. Emily is a high-level nutrition coach. We come together as one to deliver you an incredible package. I guarantee you there is no program out there like this. Hands down, I would put this up against any other program. If you're interested, go to www.proclivity.co. Head on over to the Proclivity Method. You can book a clarity call. And guess what? You'll get Emily and I on the phone. We'll be talking to you. We'll see if it works. If it works, rad. We're going to get you started. We're going to get you incredible results. Again, if you don't believe us, go look at the testimonials. We know how good we are. It's up to you if we are willing to step into it. What do you think, Coach? Agreed. Check it out. Shoot us a message on Instagram, too. I'm very much open to questions. So anything that helps you get you know, that first step going, That's do right. it. That's right. All right, guys, that's it. Next week, we got, a, we got a special guest. We're going to be talking about body image. It's going to be a good one. We have an incredible guest next week. Make sure to tune in next week. If you haven't liked and subscribed to our podcast, please do so. We love your support. We appreciate you guys being here. If you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, team at proclivity.co, or head to our Instagram page, proclivity.co. Ask us there. Anything else, coach? Oh, that's it. Thanks, Joel. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.